Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to talk about events in jQuery. Uh, each time a user interacts with elements on a web page, whether it's merely hovering their mouse cursor over a hyperlink or an image or some other, like a paragraph of text, or if they were to click on a form field or a button or an image or some other page element, or even when the page itself is in the process of loading and has finished loading, as we saw earlier, the DOM allows developers to attach code to those events so that when that event fires, the DOM will execute any JavaScript that's associated with that event. So the browser will say, somebody just clicked a button, somebody just hovered their mouse cursor over uh, a paragraph, somebody just hovered their mouse cursor over another paragraph, and somebody just clicked something else on the page. All right, Every time the browser identifies that, it's an opportunity for us as developers to write code that respond to those events. All right, so uh, obviously that's a very powerful feature, but historically different browser vendors implemented the way that it works differently, causing headaches again, like we said at the outset of our discussion about jQuery. So I could step back here and I could show you how to only use JavaScript, no jQuery whatsoever, how to write JavaScript code, pure JavaScript to handle events, uh, and then I could show you how some browsers actually allow for a more powerful type of event handling called event listeners. Uh, however, frankly, that would be purely academic because to make your application work across most browsers, you're going to want to rely on jQuery to, again, smooth over those browser vendor differences and the browser version differences. So I'm going to work on the assumption that you're interested in a more practitioner's approach. If you want to academically look at how JavaScript implements uh, event handlers or how uh, to use um, event listeners, by all means, I'm sure there are plenty of tutorials online that can show you exactly how to make that work. But we're going to look at this purely from a jQuery perspective. So there are events that we're already familiar with. For example, the onload event, we noted how that fires off as the page is loaded and as the DOM is beginning to be constructed. There are other events that we haven't talked about uh, that are raised uh, by the DOM API, such as unload. That uh, happens when the page is about ready to be, essentially, the, the, all the, the objects in memory are going to be thrown away or, or disposed of, and a new page will be loaded up. Right before that happens, the onload uh, event fires and allows us as developers to to take control of that situation. That's why sometimes you see those annoying pop-ups when you want to leave the page and somebody pops up a, a JavaScript alert box and says, wait, 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 don't you want to take care of this, uh, take advantage of this special officer, uh, offer? Are you sure you want to leave this page? And so they're handling the onload event, unfortunately. Uh, there's also an event on resize. So when somebody resizes the page, it may distort how the items are laid out on the page and it gives us as developers an opportunity to reposition things accordingly. All right. There's also uh, events that are uh, available for scrolling the web page, for clicking on things or double clicking on things, for hovering our mouse cursor over uh, items and so on. Uh, key down, key press events, all those sorts of things fire off events in JavaScript. And jQuery has the equivalent of those and they may even add a few on uh, depending on the web browser. Uh, to make it, again, accessible across all web browsers. So really the best way to do this, and I encourage you always to go to the documentation for jQuery, is to uh, go to the documentation tab and scroll down, look at the events item, and uh, you can see all of the events listed in a catalog that you can handle. Some of these will occur because of user interaction with your web page. Some of these will occur because of actions that are going on internally within the web browser. But either way, uh, for example, you can handle a click event, a double click event, something changed. You can handle something that changed on the page. Uh, if you're familiar with the blur event in JavaScript, you can handle that. Uh, things like, uh, has focus been given to a certain element? Focus in, focus out, hover over, key press, key up, key down. Um, Key, mouse enter, mouse leave, mouse move, mouse out. Uh, and then some of them that I like are things like the toggle event that occurs when you want to switch something on and switch something off. It's nice for showing and hiding things. And quite a few others as well. And again, we can't take the time to go through all of these in this short video series. I just want to point you in the right direction and then show you a couple of examples of how they're used. So that's really uh, the, my goal at this point is to create a little 
game. And as you can see here, the click -a bob game is quite possibly the dumbest game ever. Uh, I wouldn't blame you if you want to just pause the video right now and copy the files that I've created, at least the HTML and the CSS files for this because they're, they're quite involved in terms of setup. But as you can see, uh, I started with our standard template and I added in a reference to jQuery. I added in my own reference to script16.js where we're going to do most of our work and then also to a style sheet which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, I changed up the body uh, quite a bit. I have two div sections. One has an ID of game where I have an image and you can use any image you want but go ahead and use the image that I've supplied you in uh, the folder if you'd like to follow along closely with what I'm doing. We're going to be able to click on uh, an image of me and it will give you a point every time you click on it all right like I said it's the dumbest game ever but we just want to illustrate what the kind of events that we can handle and how we can write code to um, do interesting semi interesting things anyway here we're gonna have a paragraph where we're keeping score specifically the score will be inside of a span tag and then we're going to also have a success that will hide and show based on whenever we click so some neat things going on there. And then a start over uh, div tag. So I'm going to hover my mouse cursor over this div and it will reset the score back to zero. So we're going to be able to handle some events. We'll be able to uh, work through some new functionality in jQuery that you haven't seen yet. And uh, let's go ahead and show you the CSS. Again, if you just want to copy the CSS from what I've done in the folder that has all the the work that we've done for this entire series of videos I won't blame you but if you want to type it in go ahead and pause the video here and I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see the rest of it here and as you can see I have two classes hover out and hover in and then I have some CSS applied to the div tag for game and the div tag for start over okay let's go ahead and close that down we're not going to need that anymore all right, so let's go ahead and start with writing some uh, jQuery. Now, what I like to do whenever I get started here is to make sure that everything's hooked up and working before I get too far. Otherwise, I might be debugging problems that don't really exist. So I'm going to, first of all, start with the bob head. I know that if we look back at our HTML, I have an image with an ID of Bob head and that's what references that image on our web page. So let's start there. And when we click, we hit the click method or the click event rather. What we want to do is fire off function. And inside that function, I'm just going to put an alert got here. And that should at least tell me if I've got everything wired up correctly to get started. And it worked. Okay. So now I feel good about this. I'm going to get rid of the alert. That was just to test the functionality. And what I want to do is keep track of the score. <clears throat> Each time you click on the bob head, it should give you the updated score. So we need to create a variable called score. We're going to set that outside of the click event inside we're going to increment score and then I want to display the current score in the span called with an ID of score and I'll just set its text value to score like so that should work let's save this and then let's run it and you can see it works awesome now, ideally, I would want this message to be hidden when we load up the page and only be displayed when a successful click is registered. So let's work on that part next. To do that, the first thing I want to do uh, at ready is to hide our success paragraph tag using the hide method to manipulate that DOM element. And then I want to show the success tag once we click on it. Let's start there. Save. Now let's rerun it. All right, that worked, but it doesn't go away. Ideally, it would stay on screen for a second or two and then disappear. So let's work on that. 
So what I can do here is chain how um, these work. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give show a parameter of fast. That will be how quickly the uh, that message is displayed. There's fast, and I can choose slow as well, which will be a little uh, take a little bit longer. Let's choose slow so you can see it happen in the video. And then after two seconds, I want it to fade out. So I'm going to call fade out and then give it 2,000 milliseconds as a duration to fade out over. So let's notice I'm chaining all these together, showing slow and then fading out over two seconds. And notice it said you clicked a bob and it slowly fades away. Very cool. All right, we'll just leave it at slow for now. All right, so that completes some of the functionality. The other thing I wanted to do was when you hover over this start over area, I want the score to return back to zero. So you hover your mouse cursor over this and it should turn back to zero. So let's handle the hover event for the start over div. So start over div or the I the item that has an ID of start over and I'm going to cover uh, handle the hover event and again these events take anonymous functions and inside of that anonymous function is where I'm going to do all the magic I'm going to set the score back to zero and uh, I'm going to change the score um, text and you can see I've been inconsistent with whether I use single quotes or double quotes I would prefer to say with single quotes sorry about that I don't think it matters which one you choose as long as you uh, choose uh, one and stick with it okay now if you take a look at the hover method in, in the jQuery documentation. I think that's probably something we should do. It does something a little bit different. You need to be familiar with this. Uh, so let's type in hover. And notice that it takes a handler in and a handler out. And then also a handler in out. I'm going to use this first overloaded version of this of this method and so I'm going to supply it two anonymous functions one to that will fire off whenever we hover into our uh, div tag and then when we leave when our mouse cursor leaves the div tag it should fire off the second one so I'm going to do this All right, so just so you can fully understand what we're doing here, this is the the handle, the function to handle the hover in, and this is the function to handle the hover out. And notice that they're separated with a comma. And I find this to be one of the more challenging things about working with jQuery and with JavaScript in general, but jQuery in particular, is that you have to really understand where all of your uh, your your code blocks are and realize. Uh, that you could make a mistake here, so be very careful about lining things up appropriately, uh, knowing where things start and where things end, because it would be easy to forget a parenthesis or something, and you're just confuse yourself uh, once you get nested deep inside of a of a function that owns another function that owns another function. Okay, that's happened to me. All right, let's continue on here. So the other thing I want to do then is when we are hovering over, I want to add a class called hover in. And then when we and and mo remove the hover out class. And at the very beginning here, I'm going to add the hover out class
like so. So at the very beginning of our application execution, I'm going to apply the hover out class. As you hover your mouse cursor into uh, our start over div, then I want to add a class and remove the hover out. And then I'm just going to do uh, that conversely here in the second function. I'm going to remove class. That should be class. Remove class. Hover in and add class. Hover out. Let's save that. And let's execute it. All right, so now let's add one or two clicks here, and then I'm going to hover my mouse cursor over, and notice that the score should turn to zero. Now, when I hover my mouse cursor over, notice that the colors flip from a yellow background with red text to a red background with yellow text, and my score went to zero. Now, when I remove the mouse from the div tag, notice that the uh, that the divs colors or the uh, the style that was applied to that div changed as well. Okay, very cool. All right, so that's just about all I have to say about events in jQuery. I've demonstrated how you handle those events, um, what to do when you have a jQuery event that takes two functions, anonymous functions, uh, for the same event handler, and where to go to find more events. Go to the documentation, go to the events, and see what you can do for each of the elements that you want to inter your users to interact with on screen. Okay, So with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. You're doing great. Hang in there. It's not complicated stuff. It's fun stuff, but you can get yourself confused if you're not watching the curly braces and, the, and the, uh, the parentheses and things of that nature. So just, if you ever get in that situation, stop, delete all the work that you've done, or copy into a scratch file, and then slowly copy it back in when you make sure you've lined things up correctly. That's my advice to you. All right, good work. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.